In 1921, under the guidance of National Park Service Director Stephen Mather, the first National Conference of State Parks was held. The states saw the importance of preserving their own scenic beauty and natural resources. Indian Springs State Park was originally given to the state of Georgia for recreational use in 1825, making it the oldest continuously operated state park in the U.S., although it was not given the official title of state park until 1931. The state park system rapidly increased in 1933 thanks to President Franklin Roosevelt's creation of the Civilian Conservation Corps. The CCC was developed as a part of Roosevelt's New Deal. It was open to unemployed men between the ages of 17 and 28 and provided jobs as well as restored and protected the nation's natural resources. In all, the CCC helped to develop eight new Georgia state parks until it ended in 1942. Today's state park system is made up of 48 state parks and 16 historic sites. Well, Georgia's recognized as having one of the best state park systems in the country. Um, many would say the best, but I'll just put it one of the best. And that um, has a lot to do with early foresight and planning and current administration and also a lot with just what a beautiful state we have. Sweetwater Creek State Park is located just 15 miles west of the city of Atlanta. Visitors to this park can enjoy fishing, water sports, hiking, and learning about Georgia's history from the ruins of the new Manchester Mill. This has been a park since 1972. The main historical feature of the park is the five-story new Manchester Mill, which was burned down during the Civil War. And the main scenic feature for most people, and one of the reasons that it was established certainly, was to preserve this mile-long stretch of whitewater rapids, rapids up to class four plus. The mill was built over a two-year period, 1847 to 1849. It was a five-story cotton mill. It was larger than anything in Atlanta when it was built. What they made was a type of cloth called Osnaburg, and in 1864, some of it was made well, sold to people who made it into Confederate soldiers' uniforms. And for this reason, it was ordered burned down by General Sherman. We are pleased to be so close and offer such uh, beautiful habitats. And I mean, just walking along this stretch of Whitewater Rapids is not something you can do in any other Georgia State Park. It's really a unique thing. And to be so close to the city, um, it's a real plus. Fort Yargo State Park is one of just nine Georgia parks to have mountain biking trails and often host mountain bike races. We're an off-road athletic events company. We started out as a 12-hour, six-hour mountain bike race and we've slowly kind of evolved into trail running races and mountain bike races and off-road duathlons and Georgia, Alabama, as well as North Carolina. We hit uh, several different Georgia State Parks. Fort Yargo State Park, we go, we go to this one. In fact, we've got about three or four races here. This is one of our favorite venues, and I think probably because it's in our backyard, we're only about 12, 13 miles away, so we come to Fort Yargo quite a bit. We go to Red Top Mountain State Park, Victoria Bryant State Park, and then Hard Labor Creek State Park. Hard Labor is a new one for us. We just started there last year and that, that's a neat little venue. I think the trails just offer a uni something unique. It's uh, anybody can walk out their front door, run on the uh, streets, run on the asphalt, but this just provides something different to you. Like here at Fort Yargo, you get the, uh, you get the lake as a background, the trails, the scenery, the, the deer, you just, you don't get that on the, on the roads. We, we've got a great relationship with the parks. They've honestly welcomed us with open arms. I think this park has seen two other park managers since we've started and, and the relationship has just been great from a, uh, local park managers all the way up to the regional offices. We've got a good relationship with those guys. I think it's a great opportunity for visitors to get out and see different venues that they never go to. We get, we get that feedback quite a bit from racers and, uh, that come to the races and, the, and they say, you know, we would have never ever visited that park if you wouldn't have had a, a race there. So I think it's valuable to the parks that they do get more exposure through our website and through the races that the people come out to the parks. And then likewise, they provide 
a trail system for us that we can set up and put a race on. Red Top Mountain State Park is located northwest of Atlanta on Lake Alatoona. The 12,000 acre lake offers some of the best bass fishing in Georgia. I used to bass fish a lot. I used to fish a lot of tournaments and one day I caught a striper. Fell in love with striper fishing. Next thing I know, went out and bought a striper boat. Did a couple of articles, won a few tournaments, and it kind of went from there. It, it kind of came to me. I didn't go to it, but I'm blessed that I do get to do it. I've been doing it for 16 years full time. Put my kid through school, through college, you know, fishing for stripers and hybrids. So it's a good living for, for us dumb rednecks anyway. We got stripers, hybrids, spotted bass, largemouth, catfish, every breed of catfish, flatheads, channels, blues, yellows. We got all the catfish, brim, crappie, carp. They used to call this the Dead Sea years ago. You'll st still see Lake Altoona ref uh, referred to as the Dead Sea on the internet. It's far from it. It's one of the best fishing lakes in the state of Georgia. Each park is different and has something unique to offer visitors. Likewise, each visitor finds their own reason to love the parks. We love being outside, love being at the parks. I've got four daughters. And this is what this is what we do. Watching a kid for, catch his first fish, or watching anybody catch their first fish ever, just just the, the 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 smiles that you see when that fish comes over the side of the boat. A trophy isn't weighed in pounds or by inches. It's weighed by what that young man or young lady or young you know youngster sees that fish as. You know, a, a one pound fish can be Moby Dick to a child, but where to. You know, like me, it takes a 50-pound fish to get me through. So. But it, it has to be about watching kids catch their first fish. It's something that brings me a great deal of satisfaction and pleasure. And um, I'm, I guess, more of an educator than anything else. But a lot of what I do is just bring people down here to these dramatic places. And a lot of that speaks for itself. And I love bringing first time people down here. Uh, I love sharing, I love um, educating and certainly like working with people too. So that's a plus. Um, so for me, it's been the ideal job for many years and that's a blessing.